or compression technologies my name is ranjan uh, today i am an instructor for this angular integration i hope you already like uh, learn the java from sinus sir but today i am going to show you like whatever application you have developed how we can go and integrate that application into uh, angular okay now let's get started i hope you people know a little bit about the angular and today i'm going to show you like the transaction details let me open that file first then we'll go and discuss about other part you have this api response right the transaction details and you want to show this transaction details into your application using angular as well as you, uh, after that you are going to show the data as a pagination you have to enable the pagination sorting export to excel export to pdf all these things you want to do for your application but one thing you have to know that like we are not going to learn that um, angular now we are going to learn how to implement all these things using the angular part now let's get started and see that how we can go and achieve this okay before that, make sure that you install the Angular into your system. And uh, uh, like uh, you have to install Node.js, you have to install VS Code, you have to install the Angular, all these things you must have to install into your system. OK, now let me do one thing. Let me create one blank application. Before that, I'm going to see that what is by our, our application. Let me open. You have to check your Angular version. To change the Angular version, you have to write ng version. You have to see that in my local, I have my Angular version is 13 point something. But if you're trying Angular for like 14, you can try. That is not an issue. But I'm going to show you the demo using the Angular 13 point version, 13 plus. You can see that the version of the Angular is 13.3.9. Now our application is going to build on 13.3.9, and we'll see that how we can go and do all this kind of task. Let me do one thing. Let me go to our application, one of the folder. You can go to any folder, guys. It's up to you. Um, let me go to Angular folder, and here. What I'm going to do now, let me open in the command prompt. Now let me create a new Angular application. To create a new Angular, Angular application, you know that we have a command called ng new, and you have to give the Angular project name. Let me give the project name is suppose Angular of a transaction. Name is, the application name is suppose uh, transaction. Transaction app. Okay, you can give any name of the project, but let me give the project name is ng new transaction app after that you have to click the hit the enter once you hit the enter it's going to do its boilerplate code boilerplate code means the default angular application going to be run it's going to ask you do you need to add the angular routing it's up to you because in your application we have only one page let me make it yes but if you want you can make it no if your application doesn't require any kind of a routing you can make it no if you require you can make it yes after that, you're asking what type of style set you are going to implement in your project. Because as of as I know that if people know CSS, but there is n of different different type of CSS are available in the market. One is CSS, SCSS, SAS, and less. I know that these are the advanced things. We don't need to do anything. Now, as of now, simply go for the CSS because CSS, most of you know the CSS. Once you click that, it's, you can see that it's going to create a application for us. It's going to create a boilerplate code for us. We can able to see all the codes. You can see that all these files are created. After that, it's just installing the packages. Okay, it's installing the packages. Let this package going to install. It will take few more seconds to install the, all the packages. Meanwhile, we'll go and discuss something. Now, guys, first understand what we are going to achieve in this uh, class. Okay, you can see that we have some JSON is there. Now, as of now, I have I have taken this JSON and we are going to integrate the JSON on the application. There are two way we can achieve this task. What is your task actually? Our task is first one will be the after this JSON. First task will be the understand the what are the tasks we are going to do. First task is our like display this transaction. transaction in a table just a second guys someone joined the first task, task is we are going to display these transactions in a table format okay table format means understand the things 
what about transaction key is here right you can see this transactions these things we are going to display in the table format okay second second things okay second thing will be table okay in table or grid you can say anything in this data you're going to display table or grid format you can grid also same as table in table and grid we have to first we have to do that call pagination how to do the pagination means you can see that we have lots of data here how we can go and implement pagination to our application that is the first thing okay this is the functionality second one after the pagination we have to go and implement sorting just imagine we have a name we have a uh, like amount we have a super status you want to do the sorting on that then how we can go and implement sorting into our application that is the things we have to implement after that we are going to do that export to pdf like whatever data you can see here all data we are going to export to pdf in fifth we are going to discuss export to excel okay how we can go and export this data into excel format okay now these are the main part we are going to cover in today's section now we'll go and first do one by one but to achieve all these things do you require anything do you do you going to learn any third party uh, library for that yes now let's discuss what are the tools we are going to use today to achieve this task because like i understand one thing no one in this world is going to write the code from scratch you have to understand as a developer if you join any company no one is going to write a code from scratch everything you have to uh, use a ready-made tools why tools are required because tools will help you to like like achieve your task very faster just imagine if you're going to display this data and in table going to implement sorting export to pda pagination all this thing will take minimum to minimum like one month to complete why because sorting you write the logic for each and every column export to pdf you have to write the pdf logic export to excel you have to go to write the excel logic all these things you are going to write and you record developers to work all these things but i'll show you using the tools okay how you can go and achieve this task in one hour that is the main part we are going to learn today you will see that using some kind of tools how we can go and quickly achieve all these things in the in between one to two hour uh, let's go and learn what are the tools we are going to use into our application okay first tool right the first tools we are going to learn that is called prime ng prime ng prime ng is a world widely used uh, ui library or component library for the angular it's a totally open source free of cost most of the companies are using prime ng for their software development or ui development you can trust me last couple of years my company is using the prime mg for developing all its component it's free of cost previously we are using kendo ui and after the kendo ui licensing cost we are jump into prime mg there is n number of a different different kind of ui library it exists in angular using that you can develop your application but today in this video we are going to focus mostly into prime mg Prime MG our UI library, okay? Prime MG is a UI library. UI library means guys, what? Like uh, it should be without writing minimal code, you can go and design your proper UI. Okay. Second, Prime MG is called for UI library. For this Prime MG, inbuilt the sorting and pagination for the application. It's going to display the data. It need to display the pagination it need to display the sorting all these things are inbuilt in prime mg we are not going to write a single code for that okay after that export to pdf okay export to pdf for the pdf stuff we are going to use the type of library called js pdf and pdf auto table 
SPDF and PDF auto table, these two libraries we are going to use that is going to help us to export the this data in the form of our in the form of our PDF. Okay, these two library we are going to use. This is the most widely uh, like used uh, PDF library for the application. Everywhere if you go, the most of the company are using JS PDF for JavaScript PDF generation. These are the two things we are going to learn. Apart from that, there is a last one called Excel uh, one. For that reason also, suppose if you're going to do the Excel part, for that reason we're going to use XLS library, okay? This is also a library we are going to use to export the data using the Excel. And additional one is file saver. Know that this is the uh, new things for you, but file saver is the library which is used to download the file. Okay, it's used to download the file to understand all these things. Now, guys, why I'm saying all these things? Because if you go and write everything from scratch, it will take much more time. You cannot achieve a single thing today because it will take too much time. To overcome that issue, we are going to use lots of predefined tools. Using that tools, you are going to achieve all this task. Finally, file saver is the one of the library which is used to download the Excel file because after you generating the Excel, how you can go and download? To download the things, we are going to use the file saver library. Finally, we are going to load, uh, we are going to learn another uh, library is called Bootstrap. You know that Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a CSS library. In specifically, Bootstrap is used to design your application for your like suppose you want to do some kind of UI layout designing, all this thing for that design, going to Bootstrap. Prime MG is the component library. Remember? component ui library I means suppose you want to go to add a table you want to go to add a autocomplete you are going to add a button you are going to add a checkbox all this thing is in built in the prime mg using these are the tools we are going to achieve our task just a second guys we are going to achieve our task and let's go and discuss how we can do all these things using our using our these tools as well as these other tasks we are going to perform okay clear about now what are the tasks we are going to perform today in this session and what are the tools we are going to use today to achieve this task guys trust me no one going to write the code from scratch all are using the tools that's the reason nowadays to understand the tools is more important than learning the core part because if you go to company company has no time right if you're going to write a normal sorting and pagination and it will take too much time right you have to write write lot of code for that no nothing worry about that just use the library it is going to take care of all your works okay now now things will be display the transaction in table and grid now let's go and start with one by one we'll discuss one by one and we're going to discuss one by one this is things are interlink just remember all these things okay now display the transaction okay first of all display the transaction in table or grid format what is the transaction guys this is our json right what i'm going to do i know that you guys are developer java applications and that application the api endpoint the java spring boot the api endpoint is going to give you this data it may be get format it may be post format it doesn't matter it's any format will be the, the method will be any format but for us what we can go and do now just imagine you are a UI developer and suppose your backend application is not ready or backend is under development. Now, how you can go and mock the result, mocking, mocking the result in such a way that without dependent upon the, your backend service, how you can achieve your UI? Because nowadays everything is loosely coupled, right? Loosely coupled means your UI will be different, your API is different, everything is different. Now, just a UI developer, how you can go? and achieve this task without connecting to the actual API. Now let's go and do that part. Okay, now you can see that our application is already uh, installed, right? You can see that the application got created, transaction app uh, already created, and this is our application, right? Let me go to this transaction folder. This is our application, right? And let me open this one using the Visual Studio code. To open the Visual Studio code, you can simply go to that folder, 
and just type co dot co dot means it's going to open the application all dot means all the things into the application folder now you can see that it is going to ask you this authorized folder this is the new thing added by um, uh, visual studio you can just click on yes once you can click yes then what you can see that you can see list of files and folders are created here now we will go and see how we can go and implement this task for us okay now this task us let me copy this one and what i'm going to do guys i'm going to open the readme.md and here what i'm going to do i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to say that these are the things i'm going to do today task and tools okay this is our objective today this is our readme file means guys this is just a notepad file for the project here you can go and add your all the steps just a second okay now now you can see here we have this task to follow now let's go do the first stuff now doing the pagination sorting export expel uh, export to pdf and export to uh, export to excel all this thing will do later first we'll go and create a this grid format now do one thing you can see that after you create the application we can able to see the default app component here because in our application we have only one page we are not going to create a multiple page let me run this application if you go and run this application npm start is used to start the application right let's wait for some more times now it's going to uh, uh, generate the bundle once the application is bundling like the compiling after that is going to open in the localhost 4200 just wait for a few more seconds you can see that our application is ready now let me open in lo localhost 4200 you can see that our application is going to display here this is our default boilerplate code when you're going to create any angular application now in this case what i'm going to do now guys this is the by default is the app component right this is the component displaying what i'm going to do let me remove the entire things here okay let me say here like um hello now you can see that we can able to display the hello here means i am remove every code and you know that if the component got created we have created three files right one is css one is html another one is the code file this is our actual code file and you have a specs file which is used for the unit testing but in today's class we are going to focus much more into these three files css html and ts now the first thing is going to call that we are going to call this api right we are going to call this api this data without data what going to do we have to call this api then what I'm going to do now, guys, because I don't have the Java actual endpoint. For that, I'm going to show you how we can mock the data in local that without calling the backend API also, you can go and call that. Let me show you. You know that in the application, we have a folder called assets. If you go to SRC folder, we have a folder called assets. Assets is called as the static file. Suppose you want to put any logo, you want to put any videos, you want to put any images or any kind of static data you require. That all the static data you can go and add in the assets folder. For that reason, what I'm going to do here, let me create a folder called mock. Okay. In the mock folder, let me add a file called transaction.json. Okay. Transaction.json is the file I have created what i'm going to do now guys i'm going to copy this entire json just imagine this transaction.json is your api endpoint see this one we have created you can know that, know that this is the object this object called status block and status block is contained after status block there is a transaction details this transaction details is an array right each and every array contain the list of data this one and this one this content all this kind of data now what we're going to do now we are going to consume this json into our application as a service then what we can do now this data we are going to call into our application now let's go achieve that first our first task is guys what our first task is we are going to first display data in grid format okay for the grid format we need the data for the data we need to call the api to call the api we need a http client http service to do http service let's see how we can go and implement the http things into our application 
as you know in the angular to do any kind of http calls means any the service calls or any xml like any the remote calls then we must have to import the http client module into our application let's go you can see that in the application we have a module called app.module.ts this module is our first module or primary module for the entire application. Now here, what I'm going to do, here I'm going to do the, uh, we are going to import the HTTP modules for our application because we are going to call these files, right? We are going to call the API. Just imagine I have hard code the API here, but in a real case, you are going to call the API, right? To call the API, the API is hosted in different path. This may be any different, different URL. So how you can go and consume that URL into your local? For that reason, we must have to import the HTTP client module. While the HTTP client module is not coming here, what we can do now, you can go to here, I can type import, okay, from, okay, from other red angular plus common slash HTTP. This one is, Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. So I can see that I have imported the HTTP client module here which module is enabled in the Angular to do the HTTP work. HTTP in hypertext transfer protocol work. work. Hypertext transfer protocol means it's a REST API, you are going to call the gate, post, put, anything you want to do, you can do using the HTTP client module. Okay, now, what I can do? First, we have to import the HTTP client modules. Then, next step is in the, in because this is our primary component, right? This component is going to display all the data. In the component, we are going to do, we are going to call that API. Which API? We are going to call the transaction dot API, your API. And that API is going to do the actual work. You're going to call the data, going to display all the things, we're going to do that, okay? To call the API, all this thing in Angular, we have a concept called service. Service is used to call any kind of HTTP calls you are going to do. That time we are going to actually mainly use the service. Now let's go and create a service. And that service, I'm going to open the here to create a service, ng generate service. A stands for service, which is used to create a service. Now, what service is going to create? Suppose let me create a service name is transaction. Now let me create a folder called services. And inside that, let me create a uh, service called transaction. transaction and this is going to create a services folder inside the services folder is going to create a file called transaction service dot ts and here we are going to do actual our api call means all the that's just like you know java you are creating different layer in this layer you are writing your all the business logic we are going to interact with the database calling the database preparing the data send to the our send to your um, api same to same in angular Services is a concept where you're going to call all the API call, you're writing your own logic for an application. This does like a different service layer. Now here, what we're going to do now, we're going to call the API. Which API? The transaction API. And whatever transaction API going to call, that data we're going to display into our application. Now let me create a function, that function call I suppose, get all transaction. Get great all transaction. 
this function is going to call the api get all the transactions from the api to call the api first we have to import the http client module that is okay after that to do the http works then what are we going to do now we are going to import the http client for that reason let me write private private http and http client this http client is the class which is given by the http module okay http client module which is used to do the all the kinds of http works okay, like get post put delete options whatever you are going to do you can do using the http clients now here what i'm going to do i'm going to call this service okay now let's guys understand where this file is present did you see that this file is present inside the assets folder assets inside a mock inside the mock we have a transaction.json right <laughs> sorry this is present there now what are we going to do now this we are going to first access this file right if you're going to access this file then only you can do the call right for that reason what i'm going to do now let me go to localhost 400 slash assets slash mock slash transaction dot json opening let me see that what happening okay. assets plus mock plus transaction dot json you can see that this is the file guys we are going to call into our application just like just imagine as of now, imagine I have added this file into local. But if you can see that this is a URL, right? Just like suppose instead of a localized 4200, suppose this is your own, um, suppose this is your own URL, right? This is your own URL, just like a Java Spring Boot URL. You can go simple call consume this URL, right? Let me see that using the postman. If you go to postman, you can see that. Sorry, you can go to postman also if you're going to give this url it's going to give the result because this is just like a url now if i go to postman if i go to the here i can paste the url here and simply send send you can see that the postman is able to get the data you can see that it's giving the status block it's giving the transaction block all this data is available here just like this is your spring boot and url right in spring boot we are generating a endpoint that endpoint we are consuming in the postman same to same what i did i have created a static not static this is also dynamic but mock json here and this json is just going to treat like a endpoint now in our application we'll go and consume this endpoint into our http calls and get the result that thing we are going to do now okay for that reason what i'm going to do let me go to here our transaction service here i'm going to call that this dot http is the instance of http client now you can see here our method is get if your method is post all these things you can use the post but as of now if you're going to direct access a <coughs> URL in the application that is called the get by default is a get one for that reason we are going to use get to get we have an option called get okay in get we are going to pass the first parameter is called URL we're going to pass the URL what is the URL guys this is our URL let me copy the URL and paste it using the double quote right now you can see that this is our api endpoint this api endpoint i have called using the get and in the get get the result simply i'll do mark it ret return return the result okay now in this case you can see that how we can go and use all these things now you can see that i have a get transaction uh, like service the function there which is going to call this api transaction.json are simply returning the data now what we are going to do now guys we are going to implement this transaction service into our component page we are going to call this transaction into here okay 
for that reason what i'm going to do now i'm going to create a constructor okay now let me implement implement on init on it you know that this is the um one of the life cycle hook of angular which is used to call when component got initialized right now this is our code now, what i'm going to do now we're going to inject that service into the app component you know that dependency injection is one of the part in angular which is used to inject the service into the application for that reason what i'm going to do now i'm going to create service okay and the service is the type of transaction service you know that you guys are learned this kind of service dependency dependency injection into java same to same in angular suppose you are going to do the dependency injection you have to import that service into there but i know that into your class into your java maybe you are going to inject into constructor then you are assigning the we have to define one uh, same object here and assigning here right but in angular is different you simply declare here and it's going to available no need to assign to again to another another object simply you can go and access the data right now we can get the service this service is our transaction service instance now what we're going to do now in the page load ng on it load what we're going to do we are going to call this transaction service get all transactions okay get all transaction we're going to call now this is used to represent the local object like it's going to refer to the current object and this dot service dot get all transaction okay get all transaction is the function available inside the transaction right transaction service now here we're going to do the subscribe and let me mark i'll discuss this thing what, what i'm doing here now let me go and console dot log is called result okay now Okay, subscribe is used to call the observables because by default because you don't know how many times will take to get the data from this api it will maybe take fraction of a second it may take one minute it take 10 minutes you are taken like millisecond or so you have no idea but how you know that suppose when the record uh, result will come how will know that when it is going to come that's the reason this is the subscription method is here now this is going to call the api and it will wait until the response will receive once the response will receive now this is going to call this function this is called the anonymous function this is going to be called means subscribe method is used to call the api and give you callback when your result will be ready got it now after that let's go and run this application first okay now we'll go and open the inspect we'll do the inspect here go to console and what we're going to do we are going to type here localhost 4200. Now, guys, once you click localhost 4200, you can see here in the console, we can able to see this data. You can see that we are calling this API transaction.json. And here, we are getting the result. You can see that we are getting two objects. One is status block. If you go and see the JSON, okay, you can get two objects. One is status block, one is the transaction. <coughs> see here, we are getting status block transaction status block is a normal object okay response code zero response message message that's all but you can see the transaction list you can able to see that this is the our entire json is there this is our entire json now this json we are going to bind into the result but before binding that let's make a proper way of coding okay you can see that what is the type of if you're going to mouse over here what is the type of result it's an object we don't know because object is a support type of all the types in the java also object also support type of all the types it may be integer string float anything will be there object is going to contain all the data but we require a proper structure of the data proper structure means we are going to define a data in such a way that is going to store the exact copy of data that you know poco model or you are creating the entity model right entity is going to just create a same to same property of your database class same to same guys in in our case of angular what are going to do we are going to create a models and that model is going to store the information about all the response it's always be ideal when you're going to develop any application using the angular you must have to store the data in a proper manner 
for the reason what I'm going to do now, let me create a folder called models. Okay. And here let me create a file called transaction.model.ps. Here, based on the response, you must have to create the object. Now, let me create a interface, export interface i transaction. Okay. i transaction result. Okay. Just imagine this i transaction result will go to store. This, just imagine this is the primary object. Okay. Now, this object is content status block and transaction list. Now, let me create a property here that is called as, let me create another interface, export interface, suppose status block. Let me create i status block. And this is going to contain two property, response code and response message. Let me go and copy paste here. And I have to mention, I have to mention this is as a number and this is as a string just like your mapping okay and what i'm going to do here i'm going to make it status block as a key and type of the value is i status block means in future you are going to call this model or call this class or call this interface then there is a one attribute status block the, again the status block is content response code and response message right same to same guys, what we're going to do now, we're going to create a, another object called transaction list. Let me create another inter interface, export interface, i transaction, okay, i transaction. In i transaction, I'm going to store all these keys, right? This key should be there. Now let me copy this one and paste it here. Let me go and remove all this double quote. Transaction ID is considered transaction ID is a string. Now make it string. Date is a string. Let's make it string. Everywhere is a double code is a string. If it's a nothing is there, it's a number, right? I will make it merchant name string, merchant uh, name is a string. This amount is a number, right? Description is a string, status also string, and remark also string. You can see that all the things are I have defined the proper type with this one. Right now, what I'm going to do now, this is the next object, right? Transaction list. Transaction list, I'm going to pass it here and I'm going to define transactions as a array. Why array, guys? Because you can see that this is an array of data. Due to that, I have defined this an array. So you see that this is a transaction, uh, this is the transaction result. This transaction result contains two attributes status block, transaction list. Now, status block is contain this data and transaction uh, list is contain this data, but this is the array of data. Now, our model is ready. Now, why I'm creating model? Because proper understanding, because going forward, we're going to work with this data, right? If you are not defining the type, that there is a no type, this is the any type, anonymous type should be there. For that reason, I have defined all the proper type for our application. Now, what we can do, now we'll go guys. this part is the interesting part you have to understand N next chapter we're just going to use a tool now here here i what i'm going to do now is get is is a generic type you know the generic generic is a concept where you can pass any type in the runtime now here i'm going to pass i transaction result as my type Now, when I'm going to call this get transaction, this get transaction is going to return me the result in the form of transaction result. If I go to the app component, if you go and mouse over here, you can see that previously it was object. Now you can see that now it is a i transaction result. And here, suppose I want to go and only print result dot transaction list. You can see that easily I can get the object. I can easily get the property. Now, if I go and save these things, and if you go and call the API, you can see that we are only getting the transaction details. So this part is required for us to display. Got it? Now, proper way to write all the coding, I'm going to suggest everyone, if any time you're going to call the API, you make sure that 
वॉट एवर द एपीए रिटर्निंग इट मे बी रिटर्न वन ऑब्जेक्ट इट मे बी रिटर्न आर इट मे बी रिटर्न एनीथिंग ऑलवेज इज गुड टू क्रिएट ए मॉडल फॉर दैट ऑलवेज गो टू मॉडल फॉर दैट बिकॉज वाई इफ यू क्रिएटिंग द मॉडल then the problem the good part is in anything going to, going to change suppose suppose you just imagine you bind this property into the somewhere in this case suppose in future this property got change if you change this property and this application going to throw an error because the use of the our angular is we are using typescript means the, all the types should be safety or should be the type should be declare for that reason it's always be good if you going to call any api Must specify the what is the data is going to return. Okay, now, now guys, what part we complete? We just call the API, right? Because without calling the API, how can go and bind the data, right? For that reason, our first part is done. Okay, before that, display the transaction uh, transaction data. Let me do that. Our zero point is suppose um, call the API to get all the transactions. call the api to get all the transactions this part we have completed right next part is display the transaction whatever transaction we get it display the transaction in table and grid format okay up to this we can able to get the result if you go we can able to get the result for everything perfect right and this data will go and display in the table format okay for that reason what i'm going to do we are going to do first going to use the tools called prime mg prime mg is a tool which is used to do all kind of ui library or component library for that reason what we going to do now let me open the prime mg so url of prime mg is prime faces dot org org slash prime mg let me write it down here the url the url is this one you can go in future i want to commit this code into the github you guys can go and uh, Access the code later. Follow then you can go and this is the URL, Prime MG. If you go guys here, Prime MG, click on this one, Next Generation Angular UI. If you going to click it here, you can see that this is. You can see here the forms. It is contain thousands of like you can see hundreds of more than hundreds of controls, readymades are available here. Okay, everything is available here, but. we going to go by step by step i'll going to show you how you can go and integrate prime mg to your application okay as i told guys we are using angular 13 right but but you can see that in in prime mg right hand side we have a it's displaying the version call 14.1.2 because due to angular 14 is released they have upgraded the prime mg to angular 14 but due to we are using the angular 13 why guys i have i have choose angular 13 why not angular 14 there is a reason because if you go and work in a company no company is going to start from scratch scratch is okay but some company are using the older version of angular someone going to using 14 someone going to use 11 someone going to use 10 It doesn't matter based on the company product they are using different different service But in this case, you must have to know that how we can go and work with the older framework, not the newer. Newer is okay. Means if you are working in a company that company just start the project from scratch, that is old and good. You can go and use the latest version. But somewhere what will happen? That is the concept we are going to work on the older version. For that reason, let me show that our older version is 13. Let me go and click the 13.14.1. Once you click this one, nothing got changed, guys. Same thing will be there. Only thing will be like they have some dependency got updated. Now let's go and start how we can go and integrate Prime MG with our project. But here you can see that right hand side we have an option called setting here. If you click on setting, you can see that we have multiple type of themes are embedded here. But by default they are using which one? Yeah, this. This they are using some default one. Suppose you are going to use the Material one, you can simply go here. Or material. If you go to click on Indigo, you can see that they have changed the entire thing to Indigo format. If you have Indigo Compact, it's going to see that it's going to change the Indigo Compact based on your requirement. You guys go and use the which one you are going to use. It's totally up to you. There is no uh, you, there is no rules that okay you have to go and use these themes. They have defined lot of things uh, themes here. You can go and simply use which themes you are required. 
But as of now, due to material design is demand into market, we are going to integrate the Prime EMG material designing. For that reason, we are going to use this material design compact. Now, guys, difference between material design and material design compact, no difference. Material design compact means is smaller one, and the material design material design is a bigger one. Okay, now we'll go and integrate indigo one. Forget about this one. Now we'll see this one how going to integrate. Now here you can see that they are saying that we have to go and install first. We, there is two dependency for us. One is npm install prime mg. Another is npm install prime mg prime icon. Okay, so install the prime mg to our application. We must have to record this two library to import. Okay. Now, but here is a trick. The trick is due to we are using Angular version 13.4.1. This is if you don't use you have to use a specific version for our application for that reason what i'm going to do now let me open npmjs.com okay here what i'm going to do now let me copy this prime mg1 okay this is the package name let me copy this package name and i'll go and paste it here okay if you're going to click it here you can see that it will going to display the list of packages you can see that if you're going to open prime mg the latest version displaying 14.1.2 this is for Angular 14, but in our case, we are going to use Prime MG for 13. Now, in the Prime MG once you open, if you go to right hand side, click on 21.211 version. If you click it here, we can see that that is. If you go scroll down, you can find that there is a version called 13.4.1. The exact same version, whatever you can see that 13.4.1. And this version you are need to be installed into a local, right? We are going to click it here. You can see that. And this is the command is used to you have to install because if you don't specify the version name now what will happen npm will go and install its latest version what is your latest version or latest version 14.1.2 in this case what i'm going to do now guys this thing we are going to not going to include we are going to specify our version this thing you must have to know how to work with backward like the older version of a package how you can go and install here you can see that we have version called 13.4.1 simply i'm going to click it one you can see that npm command npm i prime mg right if you go and click it here you can see there npm i r 13.4.1 r means it's going to spe specify the particular uh, version you are going to install into your local now what are going to do now let me open here let me stop the build okay now next i'm going to install this one npm i prime mg at the red 13.4.1 let me click once you click what will happen it will go and install it will go and download the prime mg to our local repo okay it's a local application now okay now you can see that prime mg successfully installed and if you go and open our package or json you can see that in our application the prime mg 13.4.1 is installed here clear now now next part we have done with this one right but next one is prime mg icons prime mg icons also got updated for that reason i'll go and copy this one go to npmjs.com and here i'm going to apply, apply the prime mg icons and here if you open this one you can see that is current version is 6.0.1 6.0.1 is the latest version but we require the older one if you go older one, you can find that there is a version called 5.0.0. This version we need to install. For that reason, let me copy this one, copy the command, and I'll go to here, our command prompt, simply go and paste it. You can see that it will go and install the npm i for us. Now, two things in install. One is called the prime mg. We have installed the prime mg 13, and also we have in, uh, like create in, like installed the prime mg icon 5.0.0. Okay, this two now this part is done. After this part done, we have only one thing we have to do. The things will be which theme we are going to use. Which theme means, guys? I just show that if this is other different different themes are there, right? There are three themes. Now, out of these three themes, which themes you are going to use? As you discuss, we are going to use the Indigo Compact. If you scroll down, you can see that guys, we have this is the steps we have to follow. To import the themes because these are the component but without live without css how you can go and apply the css how going to apply the style for that reason these are the basic things we have to do now but 
you can see that these styles are dependent to import this after you install this um, prime mg you must have to import this library into your css but this is one of the icon this is the prime mg one but this part this theme we can choose based on our requirement you can see that if you scroll down free themes is content 33 free themes okay because these are the 33 free themes are given by our prime mg now here we are going to focus which one the material design compact indigo or deep purple it depends upon us what we're going to use let me use the deep indigo okay now here you can see that that is called mdc material designing compact light indigo okay light uh, deep purple either this thing we are going to use this one okay light mdc material design compact light indigo this is going to be print now what i'm going to do now let me copy this thing first copy entire things what i'll do i'll go to our project and open our angular.json okay and here angular.json if you scroll down you can see here concept called styles in this styles, i'm going to paste it here what i'm going to do now i'm going to import all the styles primary styles into the angular.json file if you don't know what is angular.json file you know that angular.json file is the core file or a hard file of your angular application all the angular configuration all the build logic everything is uh, added into angular.json file now what i'm going to do now i'm going to import all these things here first now uh, comma comma okay now we have imported the prime mg css we have imported the prime ng sorry prime icon css and we imported the prime ng um, css now what we can do we can only need to change our theme what is our theme guys our theme is material designing indigo.cs okay this one copy this one and we have to go and paste it here okay it's pretty it's it's very simple but the things will be you have to know that which library because it's a library right we must have to use all these things after you do did all these things, now we are ready to use our application. For that reason, let me go here and simply write npm start. You go to npm start. Now our application is ready to display the content. Okay, but this is just a CSS integration. But what we can do now, we are going to do actual programming. Okay, now what is actual programming? As I told here in the our readme.md, we are going to first display the grid format or table format. Now, this grid and table format, we have to use the prime mg as our library. For that reason, what I'm going to do now, here I'm going to search here table. You see the table, if you click on documentation, you can see this guy, this is the table for us. Okay, see that? This is the table. You have to do nothing, you just create the row and column, it's going to create the table for us. Now, let's go and create a table. To create a table, first thing you have to go and install, they're they are saying that to install the table, we have to go and use this one angular angular cdk we are going to import the cdk what is cdk guys cdk is used to do the all kind of scrolling module because virtual dependence upon angular cdk for scrolling module to begin with the install cdk if you already not not installed this is the dependency which is required to work with our table for the reason what you can do we are first go and install the cdk but before installing cdk you have to know that what is the person we are going to use for the reason we'll go and search the angular cdk and after that, what is the version we are going to use just a second to go to person here you can see that we are going to use the 13.3.9 this is our angular version that test means it's a 14 version we're going to use the 13.3.9 let me click it here let me click it here go to copy this one and we'll go and install this one first let me stop and install guys this is all that the packages work you have to know that which package is used you have to first learn all the documents for the packages then you'll go and install okay now everything is ready uh, let me go npm start now it's going to start next part is you can see that we have import this module what i going to do now because due to this prime mg are different different com components are there different controls are there each and every controls they are creating a different different module let me copy this one and we'll go to the our pack app dot module and then go and simple paste it here and after that use that module into our application okay
right now this is the things after that what going to do now this is going to say that how to use now let me do one thing guys now let me this is the syntax we have to use to use the table you know what is the table content table content header table content body you know that table content header body and footer like t head t body t foot this is the way you can go and import the things now let me copy this entire code nothing to worry copy this entire code and go to add the component and here i'm going to add this one yes table we have content table header and table body header we are going to print list of header and body we are going to print list of body but we require a value value means all the transaction all the transaction data whatever we're going to store that is going to call as a value let me remove this one first we'll go and bind the column first we'll go and bind the column let me for that reason what we're going to do now let me create a um, model here that is going to call a export interface i column in i column i'm going to tell you two things one is key another is label i will what is key going to use future but let me display what is a label label means you can see that in the table we can able to see the column name here name country all these things these are the label in this case in this case what we're going to do now let first prepare the columns okay first we'll go and prepare the columns now let me write a function that is going to call as private to load columns or suppose prepare columns Okay. Define a variable here called as columns. The type is i column. Sorry, the type is i column. This is the array. Why array, guys? Because column is a multiple. Because we are going to display multiple columns. Now, here what I am going to do now? This dot columns equal to let me add the columns key. As of now, make it uh, null. We will discuss about key. Then we are going to discuss about label. The first label we are going to display, guys. Let me make it blank. The first label going to display guys based on the JSON is just a second. Let me open the JSON result here. Transaction. First, we're going to display name, then merchant name, then then amount, then date, then description, then status. A remark we have don't have a remark. You can see the remark is null, null, null. We are not going to display a remark. If you want, you can do that. Now name, merchant name, amount, description, status, and date. Now let me define the same thing here. The label will be name first. Same to same, what we're going to do now, I'll copy and paste the multiple things. Okay. Now, name, then we have a merchant name. Let me go and display the name here. Sorry, a merchant name. Okay. Merchant space name. Then we'll go and display the amount. And we'll go and display the amount here okay and then we'll go and display the date and it will go and display the date here date column okay let me make it capital d after date we have a description and status we'll go and display, display description here and we have a status and guys if you want you can mark as this remark as of now all the remarks are null i'm just ignoring it if you want you can just add a column here okay now you can see you can see here i can define all the column name here key i will discuss later why the key is required now what i'm going to do now in the in the page load in this dot uh suppose prepare columns i'm going to call the prepare columns means load all the columns okay now this part is done now let me cut this thing from here and I'll go and create another function called private load transaction. We will think about uh, later. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to first prepare the columns. In the prepare the columns, we are going to print the data here, right? Now you can see the data here is displaying nothing, there is no data. Now, here, what we're going to do now, we are going to make this data dynamic, right? For that reason, we are going to load from where? We are going to load from these columns, right? Now, I'm going to add here ng4, ng4, 
I'm going to write here the columns. Okay, let me make it call. Now here I'm going to bind the data called call dot label. Call dot label is used to bind the data. You can see I, I put the for loop here. I'm going to bind. If you're going to save it, you can see that it's going to display name, merchant name, amount, date. Sorry, description spelling is wrong. Sorry, guys. That's the can. and status on display the data here right simple we are binding to the columns and next one going to do that we are going to bind the result now for the reason let me define here call suppose transactions and here that i transactions i transaction of r you know that this is going to contain the list of It's going to contain the list of the transaction. Okay. All transactions. All, all. Okay. Now our columns are prepared done. Now let's load the transaction. After we let the get the result, I'm going to assign this result transaction list to this transaction. Now this dot transactions equal to result dot transactions. Transaction list. I have assigned this value. Now this function need to call after the load. Load transactions. Now this dot load transaction. Just like I am creating functions, right? Now everything is done. After that, we can get the result. We have did all these things. Now we are going to pass the. If you display the row, let me pass your attribute called value. The value attribute we are going to pass the transaction. This is the data. Now here, what going to do now? This transaction going to print it here. Okay. What going to print it here? We are going to print the data here. But the things will be we don't know for which column what data going to print, right? For that reason, what we're going to do now? That this is a template. This is the structure of the Angular. Now, when you add a transaction, right? Then what will happen, guys? Each and every transaction will come here. Let me write here a call transaction. transaction okay small one transaction now i'm going to print it here the data for that reason what i'm going to do now let me loop the same data here because i have to print one by one column now let me copy here and paste it and here what i'm going to do now i'm going to print okay i'm going to print transaction of of means this is the operator right transaction of call dot key let me remove but how you know, this is the computer i know that just imagine this is the each when you pass a transaction this transaction is a array of data right this array of data is going to loop it here in the each and every loop i'm going to bind the column right for that reason what i did the column get looped here and whatever transaction i'm getting that column key going to bind it here for that reason if i go to the models here right the transaction models you have defined the key key is the column name for that reason what i'm going to do now in the index i have to bind all the key here because name is just for a display purpose name merchant name all these things but key is the actual data key if you see that the data key is for name is small name i'm going to bind here small name and here the merchant name is a small merchant name i'm going to bind here small merchant name amount is here i'm going to display the amount and see that amount for the merchant name, you see that space is here. For display, this is our key. Now, date. For that reason, we have date. Let me copy and paste it here. Call date. Then description. I'm going to copy the description, copy and paste it here. Call description. And the status. I'm going to copy the status. I'm just mapping for this column. What is your data key? For this column, what is the data key? All this I have bind right. So let me save. Once you save, you can see that we can able to see the result here. Perfect. See this case. You can see it everything is ready made here now we can able to see the mobile you can see the all this thing will be here right the first part of completed this is called the binding the data okay display the grid this part is done right first call the api then display the table all this done. then then we're going to implement the pagination and sorting 
Let me recap what we did. It is a little bit comp not complicated, but it is a logical I have to think. What I think? Now, instead of binding each and every column one by one by one, what I can do? Due to I have a column, I just created a loop and bind it. Just imagine from this two line, my entire table is there. Nothing to do anything now. Right? First, I have binded the columns. Then I have a rows and each and every row, I have a column. I just pass the key and this key is contained. The key of the column, this is the key name. And label is used to display the header name. And a header, you can do so anything, right? All these things. Clear? Now, you can see here, we can able to see the list of data here. I think we have more than 10 or 20 data here, right? But what we can do now, we are going to implement the pagination here. Then to implement the pagination, we have two kinds of pagination always available. One is client-side pagination, another one is server-side pagination. But server-side pagination is required based on the scenario. Client-side uh, pagination also based on the scenario. In which scenario, which pagination you are going to use is totally dependent upon the use case. But today we are going to see that how in using the Prime MG we can go and do the client side pagination. The same to same also do the server side pagination. But in server side pagination, you must have to do your uh, uh, logic for that. You write the limit query, you have to write the all this kind of pagination data, you have to write that. But instead of doing that, I'll show you how you can implement the client side pagination using the Prime MG. Now, simply if you go to left hand side, guys, you can see that I have opened the table, right? If you scroll down, you can see that there is an answer called page. Let me open the page. Once you open the page, you can see that ready-made the pagination is available here. You have to know, don't do anything. What you need to do? You have to simply add paginator equal to true and row equal to 10. Just imagine what I'm going to say it here. Let me copy it here. And I'm going to say that paginator true. Paginator true is the property is available in table. If you mark it true, it's going to display the pagination for the application. But it is going to show that how many rows is required per row. Just imagine here we are going to open, you can see the, all the things. You are going to say that how many rows you are going to display per page. Suppose I am going to mark it per page, you going to display the pipe. Okay. You want to save it, you can see that it is going to automatically add the pagination here. Due to we have a more than uh, 15 record, you can uh, record, you can see that first five will be there. We are going to click that two, it is going to next one. If you going to Three is going to next one. We have less than 15 data due to that. We have three, five, five, five. First page five, second is five, third is almost 13. So almost 13 record we have. In this case, I have shown you how we can go and implement the pagination using the Prime MG. Guys, see how easiest thing is this. Are you writing any code? No, are you writing how many number of code? You are going to uh, like um, get the page number. You are going to divide the page number. What is the remain is there? You won't display nothing. You are doing nothing, guys. Here, you just simply adding the attribute called page number equal to true. How many row you are going to display per page? Let me suppose enter suppose ten. I can see that instantly you're going to change the two page because first page is ten, second page is three. Okay, this is the way you can maintain the data, right? Now you can see that we have. Uh, display the 10 data here to so go to next 10 data you're going to display this way and this is the way you can go and manage the concept of the pagination clear just looks how the libraries helps our life to achieve all this task using adding one single line of command if if not that just imagine how much line of code you're going to write right now but you can see that pagination guys we have a concept called this one per page right you have a concept of per page Let's implement this per page into the application. If you scroll down, there is an attribute called a second guys. Attribute called row per page option. How much row per page option? Let me copy this one and I'll go and paste it here. Suppose how many data I want to display? Suppose let me display five, then 10, and then suppose 20. Means we're going to add it here. You can see that in an application, we can able to see this, this 10, 20, and things. If you're going to click it here, nothing is happening. Why? If you go to inspect, you can see that there is error is showing that okay, something is happened. Some is the happened. What, what happened? It's saying that our application is is we required a animation model. Why animation model is required? Because if I go and click it here, just imagine if I'm going to click it here, 
you can see that is opening little bit uh, animated right slowly it's opening slowly it's opening like uh, sliding the slowly slowly sliding we require the concept called animation but enable the animation to application we must have to import one library into application that is called the browser application browser animation this animation you must have to import in the project to enable the animation for that reason let what we're going to do now we're going to import animation from platform browser as animation this module is required to do all kind of animation work into project let me save it once i save it you can see that i can able to see the animation here here click it's slowly opening right and if you're going to choose five it's going to change the five if you're going to choose the 10 it's going to choose the 10 if you're going to choose the 20 it's going to choose the 20. this is the pagination this is the way you can do the pagination pagination is work based on the things see this one guys this is also pagination one two three also pagination but per page also we have added how you can go and add the per page for your application this is the way you can make the application pagination clear got it how you can go and implement pagination simple way just add the attributes then it's going to work only thing is you have ready with your data just pass the data then that component is going to take care of everything for you okay now now if you go to our list then we have completed two uh, three part mostly one is pagination sorry uh, one is pagination one is display this part is done right now let's go for sorting how can go and implement the sort now let's see this guy is same to same nothing to worry you have to go scroll down you can see that the option called sort okay sort is there edimate available there what we're going to do now simply scroll down it's going to how to use a sort but you can see that it's displaying the things here called this is the code you have to write sort thing for that reason what we're going to do now you can see here in the app component we have th the th they're expecting this one p sort column right the p sort column what we'll do now here make a dynamic so here i'm going to pass call dot key he is our key right means when going to add the sort this is the key going to be based on this key is going to be sort after that is saying that we are going to add the icon what icon guys this icon right this icon is also required for that reason, I'm going to add this P sort icon here. Let me copy and paste after that label. And here I'm going to add the same field. The field is called call key. So let me save it. You can see that sorting is ready. Okay. We're going to click. You can see that it's sorting. See this one. See this one guys how are you doing anything nothing just add which column sorry just added just added which columns need to be sort you have to pass the sort key and sort icon you are passing the sort key that's all it's going to do all the sorting for you the intention of this demo is you have to know that how to use the ready-made tool not no need to write just imagine if you're going to write the sorting how much right going to write the code you have to get the column then you have to list all the list of data then you're going to write your sorting algorithms then sorting algorithm is going to check the this value next value you're going to take care of all these things after that you're going to uh, update the results a lot of things you're going to do in this case of sorting but instead of writing all this code you simply add a single line of code is going to do the sorting for you right which is the things you have to do clear guys now this is the all about our this part pagination and sorting right this thing are done and two things are left what is called export to pdf and export to excel now this thing we have the this thing is out of box this is not belongs to prime mg we are going to import these two things and going to achieve the task for that reason also if you go to prime mg if you go to option here there is an option called export if you go to click export everything is ready made here but what we're going to do now, we are going to use two options here. It's called export to PDF and export to Excel. Now, what I'm going to do now, guys, let me add two buttons. Okay. We're going to add a two buttons here. Maybe in top or down. Let me add a top here. Let me add a div. The div 
let me add a two button it button is export to pdf and another button is for the export to excel okay. we have two button here one is export to pdf or export to excel i will i'll design this thing later but let me first write the functionality then write the design part okay now this is going to be click we're going to do the excel uh, pdf and going to be excel now, what we're going to do now, let me go to the our uh, component file. Here, I'm going to write two functions. One function like um, export to uh, PDF. Okay. Another function is export to Excel. Yeah, this two is the function. Now, what we're going to do on the click function, you know the button has a click function. On the click function, we're going to call export to PDA function here. And in the click function, we're going to call export to uh, Excel one. The two things will be here. Okay. Now, this function is available. This one for the PDF one. This is for the Excel one. Now, what are going to expo export Excel and PDF? We are going to export this table into the pdf format this table into the excel format how you can do that for that reason what i'm going to do now guys now let me we have to use the little bit third party to, uh, uh, like library that third part library is our two things we're going to use one is going to use the js pdf and pdf auto table now for that reason if you go here they are using a js pdf Okay, JS PDF. Now let me go and install this JS PDF. Now I will go stop it here, guys. Okay. Now go to install npm install JS PDF. JS PDF is the one of the open source PDF library which is used to manage the PDF work. Okay. Now second I go to import is called JS PDF auto table. Auto table is used to convert the data into auto table. npm install auto table. Yes, PDF auto table. These two things we are going to first install, then we'll go and discuss the other part. Now I'm done, right? And now npm start. Now we have installed this one. Yes, PDF auto table. Now this is installed. Now we'll go and see the code. Now what we're going to do now? First we'll go and import. Okay. Yes, PDF. Yes, PDF will import. Then we have import these two packages we are going to install, and these packages, hmm, this these packages are required for for auto for PDF work. Now, uh, what we'll do now in the export to pdf what going to do now first initialize the pdf now let const pdf equal to new js pdf okay after that i'm going to first call the uh, this one auto table right now auto table here i'm going to pass the instance of the pdf now pdf and they contain property what is the columns i'm going to pass the columns here columns or headers that headers is yeah Header will be there let me pass the header called uh, this dot columns this guy what they are doing okay okay you can see that export column how, how they're maintaining they're creating the map called title and data key they require this kind of two things what we're going to do now, I'm going to make it a call const export column equal to this dot columns. Now it's called title label and this is called the key. What is this? I, I won't discuss all this. Let's first complete the things, then we'll go and discuss other part. Okay, then body, body going to pass this dot transaction.
Let me write first complete this one. Let's go and discuss about the other part. Okay, I'll go discuss about it. See this one. It's got downloaded. We go to cricket transaction.pdf. You can see that what happening, guys. Something happened wrong. Okay, let's see what the problem here. Why our PDF is displaying something different? Export to PDF. If you see this one, it's displaying different format. Name, merchant, name, merchant. This data is coming, but something happened wrong here. Let's see. Mm. Let's see what happened. Guys. Yeah, sorry, I have to pass the wrong data. You can see this, guys. Okay, let me click on export to PDF. One click, this is going to download the transaction details. If I'm going to click it here, you can see that we can able to see all the data here. Okay, I'll try here now. This is the output. Now, let's go and discuss about in depth of what we did. Okay, now. First of all, we have import these two libraries. One is JSPDF, one is Autotable. Autotable, JSPDF is used to uh, generate a PDF. Autotable is used to generate a table from the data. Okay, now, you can see that we have two things have to print. If you see this uh, PDF, you can see that we have a column and we have a data, right? This is the, this is the thing, right? Apart from that, we have nothing. Now, in this case, we have to maintain these two data as a proper way but you can see that in the column we have a property called key and label this is we have defined but this export to columns okay this column is required this format column input in column input they require a proper format what is the format they require a title and they require a property called keys now what i did i have map map means you know that is good mapping the existing columns to this format now if you go mouse over here you can see that is content title key and title data because this columns is required data in format of title and data key but in our case our data is present another format our data is present in form of key and label but it's required the data called in format of data key and title for that reason what i did before the pdf okay before the generated pdf like okay prepare the columns based on the auto table the auto table required this kind of format like this should be content column should be title and data key okay now uh, you have to first do one thing you have to initialize the pdf i have created initialize the pdf using the pdf called a new js pdf then all the auto table auto table is the function which is imported here in auto table first argument is the pdf which click means after it is the table where it is to bind the bind part is pdf part i am going to bind it pdf auto table first argument is pdf then this is the options in the options first options is the columns okay first options is the columns i have passed the format of column column the oxford common column the second is body if you see the body body type is row input they are accepting the time row input but now we are not going to uh, divide the row input row input means it's going to contain the data time row format but what i can do due to a transaction details is a uh, contain all the kind of sorry all the kind of uh, key here this we are, we are not going to change the row input what i did i just if i go don't pass it here guys it's going to throw me error why it's saying that body is required row input but if you mouse over here, our type is I transaction input, right? I transaction as a type. This type, this type is not going to work. For that reason, I have marked here as any. Any means it's anonymous type. It can be stored as any type. For that reason, I mark as okay, this transaction as a any. Now, after this part, I have the concept called save download PDF. Download. In this case, PDF dot save, and then I'm going to which file name I'm going to download pdf is the instance of the jspdf 
then I have passed this pdf auto table after everything done now we are going to download now pdf dot save I'm going to pass the file name what is the file name we download just pass the file name the dot pdf extension and what you can do if you go and click it here now to go and export it's going to download internally and download the file into our file you can see that we can able to see the proper data here guys you can do n number of changes here you can come uh, like uh, there is a different different attribute available here for styling the body style you can go and style everything auto table has a lot of concept up there but as of now i show you default one if you don't if you learn much more about that then do one thing go to this js auto pdf auto table okay uh, let me open the browser if you go and auto table and uh, you can see here this is the pdf library this is the url i copy this one i'll paste into readme.md file okay. go there and learn about how they are doing you can see that by default you can go to change the color you can change the theme you can do everything here you can see that how they're passing all these things you have everything will be there you can go and you can also direct pass the html now that is going to automatically convert that html to pdf you can do anything you can if you go and learn this one lots of options are available here you can use the theme you can use the your own theme you can do everything is there you can see the theme and the strip the grid plane everything will be there you can planning up to your what you can do but if you don't do anything by default it's going to display you the default pdf default transaction one right default one you can able to see you can see how easily you can able to convert the data into pdf simple just need to be import the some libraries and after that libraries you can so you can go and call this kind of function it's going to import the data right now export the pdf done now export to excel for expect uh, for export to excel what you can do you can go to the same JSP, uh, here you can do one thing you can this is that they are recording xls library now i'll go and import this xls library what i'm going to do now i'll go to stop with this one and uh, i'm going to import npm install xls library it's going to import the xls library here okay now you can see that library imported but I, we require another one that's called file server we need to import the file server you re remember file server we have uh, told like it's going to download the file now npm install file server okay now two things are done now we have installed the XLS library and we have been Excel the uh, this file server library. Now what we can do now? Let me go and start the program. A simple copy paste code. What we can do now? Let me go and copy this code, and I'll show explain everything. But let me first import this one. Then let me copy this code and paste this one. I'll explain this thing, but just understand what I'm doing. Uh, File server is not displaying. Uh, what we're going to do? E. Let's see, there's throwing an error. File server is saying that you have to install this package, TypeScript package, because file server is a normal JavaScript package. But this file server, if you're going to work with TypeScript, then you have to install this package as additional. Then what I'm going to do, I need to install this package as additional. OK. Now everything done, guys. Now we'll go and learn about uh, new, new things. Now, here you can see that we have to first learn what you did. We have imported the learn, uh, Excel. Excel, then Excel is getting first we're going to create a worksheet. Worksheet, do you know that? What is the use of worksheet? Worksheet is used to like just like a, you know, the Excel that is a sheet one, sheet two, sheet three is there, right? That is the worksheet. Now JSON to sheet. JSON to sheet means it's going to convert the data from JSON to our sheet. Now here I'm going to pass the suppose called product, uh, our transaction details. Transaction JSON, it is going to convert JSON. Now we'll see all these things, but let's go and see that what data is coming. Let me save it. And after that, I'll go here, click on export to Excel. Okay, sorry, I did not start the application. Okay, let me npm start.
Okay, now it's successfully compiled. What I'm going to do now, let me refresh the page. After that, we have export to Excel. Once you click that, you can see that export Excel is there. If you go to open this one, uh, okay, it's going to open. You can see that this is opening perfect way. Okay, okay, I know that the transaction ID is there. Okay, okay transaction ID is there. And uh, date, name, merchant, everything is there. We can go and do that. Now let's go and learn this thing and later we'll go and discuss about other part. Now, in import Excel is the packages I have imported. First, what I did, I have created a worksheet. Worksheet means, guys, you know that sheet one, sheet two, this one. Worksheet from JSON. This is a JSON, right? This is a JSON. This is the data is content JSON. Now, here we're going to create a workbook. Worksheet means our Excel. Then I'm going to create a workbook. This worksheet I'm bind with data. You can see that this is called data. This data we can rename sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. You know that it is called a data. And here, guys, this is these are the standard code you have to follow for the creating the Excel file. You just create in the Excel because if you go to Excel library. They have clearly mentioned what thing you can do which way. You can define a data here. You can go to define all these kind of things you can define. Then you can create a workbook. Then you're going to convert this workbook, write the workbook to the Excel. Then you're going to pass this Excel to the file server. And the file server is going to do the download the data to the Excel things. This is the way because you know this is the format of the Excel, Excel uh, Open XML Office document. This is the header of the Excel. Then this is the extension. Now the data, whatever coming, that convert into the data blob storage or stream data. Then after you're going to pass the file server, it's going to download the files. Okay, this export to Excel, all these things, right? Ready-made tool. Ready-made tool means you are going to be used. You have to follow their steps. Let me go to XLS. First, we'll go and uh, open the XLS uh, in PM. Okay. And here you can do one thing. Let me go and a second, guys. And go to XLS. This is the code. Okay. Sheet.js. And here you can go and a second. This is the thing. This one, guys. This is the actual XLS site, sheet.js. You go to demo, you can see that grid preview, how this is going to be displayed data in grid format. You can you can manage everything here. If you go to this one, sheet.js, you can go and learn from yourself. Okay. Libraries. This is a good one. If you spend some time, you can go and work with some time of data. It could be everything you can manage if you go and see read one by one by one then it's content everything for you. you can simply go and work with your data that's all you want to pass the data and you can go and use how it's going to work with your existing data or you can go to connect to any data your api anything you're going to connect it's going to display the js format you can see that export to excel this is the data export to excel is going to convert data into the excel format See this one okay this is the ready-made tool we have to use for our application now guys let's understand this part now i have created a worksheet then i get a workbook then workbook i have attached with, with a data with a workbook i have attached the data then this workbook whatever getting the data that data i'm going to pass to this function this function is going to convert the right is going to return the actually the ball data or that this is called the binary data and that data i'm going to pass into this file server file server is going to save the file into our application this is the way we can go and download the excel file this is the ready-made tool we are going to use one is export to excel another is the export to pdf these two things are available there now last part we have left that is called the bootstrap integration right the integrate the bootstrap this is css library now what we're going to do now guys bootstrap you know that why bootstrap required because if you see that this is totally display a blank application right 
are going to design a little bit. If you're going to design, you can design. If you don't want to design, it is, it's up to you. Because if you're using the Prime MG, no need to integrate the bootstrap. It's up to you. You can use or not use. But let me do one thing, guys. Let me first change these two button to our proper button. For that reason, if you go to the button part here, if you see button, so you can see that we have n number of different different buttons are available. You can see this. What are the different different buttons are available? For that reason, what going to do? Let me import this, copy this one, and import this library into our app dot modules file. Okay, let me import. Now after I copy this one, let me import it here. The module is imported. Now we're going to use the things. Now we are going to use the directives called p button. Okay, let me go and uh, here. Let me create called p button and type equal to button and let me add some class here class called uh, pi because pi button primary and here I'm going to write called label label is going to change to export to pdf and icon icon is pi pi pdf let's see it's working or not as you'll see that one. export to pdf right export to pdf there only part is missing called the icon you'll go to here and search icon icon vibe and you will go and search it here called pdf yeah pi file pdf this is the name we'll copy this one and paste it here export to pdf same to same let me add a class called margin right to and copy the same thing here guys and paste it here and after that label and icon let me remove this one export to excel and instead of pdf let me start it go to here and find excel yeah file excel Everything ready made, but you have to just know where you have to use which one. What they are. Let's see that export to PDF, export to, export to Excel. These two things are there. If you're going to click anyone, it's going to work. The last part we're going to uh, integrate is called Bootstrap. Now it's called Bootstrap. Let's go to getbootstrap.com. And get bootstrap.com. What we can do, we're going to integrate. Now, let me copy this command and I'll go to the command prompt. And here I'm going to put bootstrap 5.2.0. This is our bootstrap we are going to import. After that, what we're going to do now, I go to our um, style.css. Okay, here I'm going to import. Import URL and this will be bootstrap class. I'll go to the Node.js folder. Guys, this is a standard instruction you have to follow to integrate the bootstrap into application. Go to node modules and here going to find the bootstrap. Okay, you have a dist, we have CSS, we have this one. This is the path we are going to use. Bootstrap min.css. Okay. Done. All right. NPM start. Uh, here let me append that margin right to it's going to put some margin here let me return again something happened Okay. 
do one thing guys let me add div class container and uh, inside the container div class bootstrap class guys row and div class all 12 at this i'm going to put this one after that i have another div called class row inside the div we have class called call 12 and inside that i'll copy this one and paste it this one okay now after that you can see that it's got proper aligned okay and what we can do we can put it here suppose margin top suppose not margin top guys margin x was uh, three this where hmm. margin and i know that it will, it will be confused for you if you don't know the um, uh, bootstrap you'll think what i'm writing all these things but this is the things we have to write for our application margin top and if you want to learn the in-depth of angular all these things you can join our angular class there you can learn about in-depth of angular all these things now I'll put margin x. Two difference will be there. Let me put here the margin top to get the proper bootstrap. Last second. now this is your this is your normal one uh, let me add a heading here mm, suppose uh, let me add a heading hey you can ready your questions you have any questions anything we're going to do the question and answer here now uh, let me add it here. okay the transactions and uh, margin tops so let me make it three transactions and we have uh, export to pdf export to excel we have all this kind of pagination everything is there let me make it uh, row as pipe okay as pipe oh i can see this one okay this is the way we can able to do the pagination and uh, sorting as well as export to pdf export to excel all these things we can do that using the angular okay i'll show you how you can go and integrate with github simple one i'll go to github okay <clears throat> we have zero technologies github is here what i'm going to do now let me go and create a repo here get a new repo so my repo name is suppose angular workshop suppose 30th, okay. uh, 30th um, okay, guys, this is a repo name. I'll make it private. Only you people can be access and create a repo. Once you create a repo, what are you going to do now? We're going to integrate this repo. Let me copy this one. Okay. I'll go to here. Only thing I have to change, I have to space my username here. After that, I'm going to add this command git branch main. The ready made to, to have to follow. Then, what I'm going to do now? I'm going to publish the branch. Okay, after that, suppose, suppose all tasks completed. Now, if you go here and refresh, you can able to see that. We can able to see all the code here, right? You can see all the codes, everything is there. And wh what thing I'm going to expect to you, if you're going to give your GitHub ID, 
I can simply go and give you the permission here and you can go and access the code. Now you can see guys, guys, uh, I have created the uh, this one, uh, Angular Workshop 30th uh, October team. Okay, this is the team I've added. And here you can see that we have uh, seven pending members. I have sent, sent the invitation to all of you, whoever the ping me. And what you can go simply, what you can do now, go to once you uh, approve the uh, like request, you will be able to see this project into a repo. Once you open the link, you can able to see the repo history. There you can only able to see this project because due to I am an admin, I can able to see all the list of project, but you can go and simply say Angular Workshop 30th October. So to click it there, okay, you have to click it there and go and click it here. Okay, simply go and click it here, code. Because already code is there, you don't need to write any code. Simply click it here and copy this one, copy this one, this one, okay, copy this one. And what you can do, go to your, okay, just imagine, uh, let me open a folder, let me create suppose called clone. You can create a project folder here. What you can do, you can open and write git clone and paste your this path. Paste your this path into your code. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You're going to paste it. Then we can enter. But guys, in my case, it's throwing an error. Why it's throwing an error? because i have multiple account is in github but for you if you're first time then nothing to worry uh, if you're first time it's going to work if it's your multiple account in github then you have to specify your username but if you're first time also it's going to ask you the login that's the reason i'm saying if anyone installed angular then it's better to i'll show you your uh, machine how it's really work okay no issue then what i'm going to do it now guys i am specify my username my username is Parthranjan and I have to specify. Once specify, it's going to download the copy from the server. But in your case, I already authenticated, okay? For that reason, it's not asking of authentication. For your case, some pop-up will open. It's going to say that, login with your browser. You will simply click it there. It's going to open into the browser. There is an option called authorize. You want to authorize. Now you can able to download the code because our code is private. If it's a public, then you know it to do, you know it to do authentication. But this is a private repo. It's only going to access those people who have access. After that, you can see that our clone got copied, right? Now, what are you going to do now? You are going to open that project, Angular Workshop 30. Now, let us open into code. Once you open to code, you can guys see that your application got open. Whatever code you have got open. What you can do now next? You can simply go and open the terminal click on the terminal new terminal simply click npm install why npm install required because whatever packages we have we need to install again into a local you have to do npm install once you do npm install now what will happen it will go and install all the packages from whatever package or json content right all these packages is going to install into a local just like your maven i think you are using maven for your uh, java packages right same to same here packages name is npm package node package manager now you can see that you can able to download all the packages after you install all the packages simply you can go and type npm start npm start is going to start the, your application i'll show you now this is a fresh application okay there, there is no existing application the existing application is here let me close this application and here what i'm going to do now after installing all these things i'm going to run the npm start this is the way you have to do but before that you have to install node.js you have to install the G angular all these things you have to do now here i'm going to simply go and start npm start once you click npm start it's going to start my application that's all nothing to do simple npm install that's all it's going to take care of everything by the angular let's wait for some few more seconds now it's generating the bundles now it should go and create the application And see this guys if you go to here refresh you can able to see the application okay now this is the path i know i know that if people uh few know the angular all this thing right what you can do now guys you can go to your um uh, this one teams you will if you see that you're going to see the teams you have you as a person you can only able to see the angular works of 30th 
you can ask me question here what are the you have doubt if any problem with here just mention here at the red you can go and write the things and just mention to my my uh, this one my username and i'm going to help you on that if you are not able to install or if you have any problem just mention if you're not able to understand just mention here i'm going to try to reply you that okay uh, hello sir yeah hey. uh, sir in what scenario we use a backend pagination okay understand okay that's a good question let me go go to there only okay now what i'm saying guys like some of the cases like uh, you have a uh, hundreds of data is available now what happened we have some static data is available right static data means we have only few data is available but in some cases your uh, data will be come from a database with large number of data large means thousands of records are there are you going to load thousands of a record no right it's not possible to load thousands of a record if you load thousands of a record you know that how much time it will take suppose you have some complex calculation suppose you have some kind of view or you have a crores of data will be there i am not saying crores of data if it is if a hundreds of data also there also don't do client side pagination client side pagination is always required if you have some certain amount of data but you have to do the server side pagination if you have more than hundreds of data is there or more of data is there due to the server side pagination as a developer, I'm going to suggest every time you're going to display some data in the UI. If the UI data is not going to change, make it as it is. If the data is going to pagination, sorting, all these things, make every time as a server side. Make all the work is going to do by server. Don't do any work in the client. Client is only for display the data. Always remember. Because you are developing the application, that application is not only for the web. You can developing the application for the mobile also, right? Now, suppose you're developing, just imagine, this is our API. Just imagine this is our API. Maybe in future, you are going to develop the mobile application, right? In the mobile application also, you require the same kind of UI, same kind of data. The same pagination code, I need to write in the UI in the web, as well as you need to write the code into the API, right? As you write the code in mobile, sorry. In this case, two code I'm repeating, right? In this case, what you can do, try to do all the stuff in the server side. It's always be good practice. UI, you have to treat that UI just for display the data, give the send the request, re receive the response. Nothing. Don't write any complex algorithm. Don't like any complex logic in the client side because client side can be changed every day because user requirement can be endless. You cannot you cannot know what is the required. For that reason, in, in our company, like where I'm working or my projects, I mostly prefer the client side, not prefer the server side. For all the backend stuff, I want to record some data, I want to send some data, complex calculation, everything should be server side. If you are a Java developer, try to do everything from the server side and client side only to view. Don't think only one platform. I know that you are thinking, okay, I I my I develop application for the uh, this web web page browser. No, just think in future. Suppose your company told, okay, I will develop the same application in the mobile. Are you going going to write the I, the UI developer again going to write the code for a mobile? They need to write the pages and no, just create your API in such a way. Whatever parameter going to pass, your API should take care of everything. UI only used for view. They can change the view. They cannot do write the logic. Just imagine you are writing logic. They are also writing logic. What is the use of writing the same logic multiple times? You are writing pagination in the server side. You are writing pagination on the client side. Don't trust client side. Client is only for view. Always trust your server side code. Because server side code is more safety. You can do upgrade all these things, right? That's the reason I am always prefer go for the server side rendering, server side code. Okay, clear? Before guys wind up, please, please help me one three things. Uh, go to Cine Technologies. I'm going to send you the link. If you like this session, please go and write a review for me. And uh, that is uh, this, this is the one thing I'm going to help on your feedback. Bye all. Have a nice day.